So if anyone wants to grab the, the stage, then I can make them a moderator. Um, the whole idea would be to discuss now about the PC-104 um, connector and maybe also in more general about the, um, about the board itself. Let me see. So maybe Milenko, do you want to uh, start while I try to find some slides? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the 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 reason why this uh, discussion now basically exists is because uh, a while ago Arthur and I think Jan from LibreCube project uh, started <coughs> defining um, the PC 104 for LibreCube. And um, it's currently, it's just a very, very basic draft of uh, how it could look like on, on the wiki. And um, now people started using it and we realized that we might have to add some more, uh, some more mandatory pins to make it uh, possible to integrate different projects with each other. So currently um, one thing that is a bit missing is um, an overview who is actually using it um, and also um, when developing the PCDU some some questions came up um, and because there were a lot of discussions just in chats I thought it would be a good idea to do it uh, yeah here Pira says um, they're using it on also on the Satnox comms board and there were a lot of private discussions and the idea was to make these discussions public um, to get everyone involved and also see who's using it. Um, yeah. <laughs> also from my side, uh, very interested. Hi, Arthur. <laughs> Fabian, it's you, yeah? Yeah, it's me. Sorry. Good, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're using it um, currently on uh, the PCDU design, uh, which is also from you. <laughs> and um, we are using it on a onboard computer, but are not sure if we want to modify it, if we want to modify it. So I uh, would be interested, yeah, would be very interested to have a uh, common layout. Oh, yeah. a... mm -hmm. Does anyone has a picture of the um... PC-104 connector, maybe we can uh, then load it here and people can designate uh, the connector. I think you can open the, for, for VSC-104, we, we have something, but uh, we don't have the canvas on the corner. So we try to keep it, uh, as you know, we try to keep it close to what you have, but uh, I think you have like the canvas on the corner and we, we moved it out, but uh, we can also try to put it back. If there is like a standard that everybody is following, oh. I'll put the link on the chat. So that would be that one. That's wow, quite populated, right? I mean, this is like uh, how we this, how we started using it. We tried to keep it. Uh, we went also through a couple of other uh, like Comspace and uh, other providers, and we tried to come up with a, like a common ground. But we know that it's not fully common. Uh, some of the things are also tried like having some like a canvas on the corner. We just felt it didn't make too much sense, so we we didn't do that. But uh, I, I mean, we can use it as a basis for a discussion. I'm not saying that this is the, the way, just uh, that this is what we have right now. Uh, if there are things that we should move just to have, I mean, some of these things are legacy, as you, as you see there. Uh, others are yeah, completely optional, so you don't necessarily have to do it. Other ones are mandatory if you want to work with our OPC, from, which is also open source, of course. And I know maybe uh, Pieros has it somewhere or knows where it is from the Setnox comms. Yeah, they also um, have a quite populated 
uh, connector. And that's um, where I saw that I'm there. Up, yes. Yeah, that, that there is need for communication because of antenna deployment and stuff like this, which is mandatory on most CubeSats. Let me let me pull it up and I can send the link here. I mean, in the meantime, um, so what we have put here is, uh, let's maybe make it a bit bigger. It's really the bare minimum of uh, definitions. And even there, I'm not so 100% sure if this is the best um, selection. So we were trying to find where do people mostly put the five volt line? Uh, where's the ground? Where's the raw battery output? Um, so this seems to be quite, um, let's say, de facto standardized. Yeah. Because this is very critical to have the power lines. I mean, if you put the bots together, they should be at the same place. But for example, uh, CAN bus, this was rather arbitrary to put it there. Um, so if so, there's these two pins for the low and high channel, and then there's also the um, the redundant CAN bus. And this would be interesting to see what people would prefer to have it and where. One quick question um, to Jose: um, the the um, chart you have provided in the in the spreadsheet, um, these header H1 and header H2 um, are the connector rows we see on Arthur's screen right now, starting from left to right, basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because I never looked at uh, your your chart, so uh, just trying to figure out how this is documented. Okay, um, I think it's Piaz is taking over. No, no, um, Arthur, sorry, I, I did it by mistake. I give it back to you. No, it's fine. Um, um, and actually, if people can switch on their camera, it's, it's nice to have more of a discussion feeling. So everyone here in the is invited with 24 people in the room. Fabian, hi. And when you do so, put the light uh, behind you. That's really the best so that your face is completely dark. And, uh, <laughs> and have your microphone off, right? No, no, no. Perfect, perfect. It's only the, the only light source in the room. Sorry. I mean, I can turn it off if you want. If that's, that's better now. Oh, no, no, my camera crashed. <laughs> no, it's back. It's better now, yeah. Yeah. Good. Jose, what are you? What's flashing? Flashing for you? Okay. Just bring it along. Okay, maybe um, also to raise that, um, I mean, the connector is an essential part, but um, in the end, it transports power and uh, signals and data interface. And uh, we are really into using the CAN um, because it's, it's really reliable and it also is kind of space great because it's being used in space missions and it's low cost. Um, but there's one big downside, which is power consumption, which is really um, something. So what we have observed is for the transmitter, it's about 20 milliampere that is being drawn um, in active. In inactive, I think, what was it, Milenko? Something like still two milliampere or so. Yeah, Much less like though. Yeah. Um, so the active part is the problem. And active is, you can do it that you only activate it when you actually send something. But uh, there's, so you could have just, um, let's say, the master node um, sending and uh, switching on the transmitter at the time. Uh, but there must be at least one of the other um, parties in this network to acknowledge this frame that was sent. 
So there must be at least one other transmitter on to acknowledge the frames that were put on the on the on the bus. So we have to find a solution here because otherwise we use um, we <laughs> all the power for the CAN bus and have no power left for the payloads. Yeah, actually, we did uh, five minutes ago. We ended a concurrent engineering workshop um, where we try to figure out which components we can use for CubeSat. And uh, one thing we totally forgot was the bus. So we haven't uh, included our bus in our uh, our budget currently. So that's not good. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Arthur, even though you didn't uh, know that. <laughs> and uh, there is some, is some um, power left. Uh, yeah, but we don't know. We have to, have to, have to see if it fits. So what are the pins that you um, expect to have? For sure? On the connector? Yes. Good question. I don't know. <laughs> uh, don't think we have a layout right now. We have two layouts for PC, for, for, from the PCDU uh, you provided, basically, and uh, the OBC we are developing. And this is brand new, so I don't know if we have a chart to share right now. Um, what I can say is that uh, from our side, we'll try to make it compatible. I mean, we should try to reach something common. Yeah. At least, uh, yeah. even if it wants, but it should work together. Okay, Piaos, I guess this is a typo. Two lows. Can I low? Can I low? There is Elias here, who is the <laughs> the one that wrote it, so can can probably answer on it. Okay. Um, and I see I square C is still there. So um, yeah, maybe what's your thought about I square C? Could this be used um, like as a backup to um, uh, as a backup communication bus or to communicate with the uh, payload, for example? I think that the well, well, the, the, yeah. There's obviously, unfortunately, because many people are still poised to use it, right? And they 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 already created things around the uh, I square C. Like, it might be a, a reasoning to stay there. Uh, but another thing would be, what is the minimal subcomponent that you could imagine, and if that includes a CAN bus driver on it, right? So if it's something like. Um, for example, for the comps um, subsystem that we have here, we do have the antenna deploy and the antenna detect, right? And those are assigned, but in theory, those could be in a bus, right? Um, but that means that the other side needs to be addressable and have a driver, and it's either going to be I2C or, or CAN bus, preferably, obviously. So I think that the only question here is, could we envision a reason of having I2C versus having a canvas, right? For a super minimal subsystem, like a part of a subsystem, right? Like really something that is somewhere else in, 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 in your uh, in your bus and could use I2C. Uh, I just, uh, I don't, I want just to add something more to the confusion. Um, the, uh, one of the links, I don't remember which one, but one of the links and the link that I sent, uh, there is a uh, part of four references and uh, the back then Philip, which was the trainee doing the work, uh, he looked into, there is a paper, which, oh, sorry. there was a paper which looked into multiple issues on multiple buses, uh, so it was like single event effects and so on, and uh, I think the most safe one was actually UART. And uh, for, for our, for, for VSC 104, what we thought was the communication with the ground should come through the radio, could be done over UART simply because that is something. And then the main, the main OPC could communicate to, using Canvas or something similar. Uh, it doesn't have to be like that, but that was what we, what we thought and that was our devices. Uh, I don't know which link it was, but I, I can try to find it. Fabian, yeah. Maybe, uh, it, yeah, go on. No, I think that they, 
Elias can specify for the I squared C that there was something around compatibility with existing antennas or something. That's what I allude to existing systems with I2C. Uh, antenna deployment systems, I mean. Well, it would be nice to have on the computer, though, be a high speed uh, communication protocol. Uh, maybe have something receiving on the antenna, you can typically um, have your front end uh, transmit the, like, let's say, constellation the deep constellations to, to bits. In other words, IF uh, high speed channel. So that was obviously not going over a high speed channel because I only got uh, basically half of your um, comment. But um, yeah, that's actually the point. Um, I think we have the two camps that we want, or the two aspects we have to consider. One is the um, um, things, the pins that should be mandatory for or that that will be mandatory for all missions like an antenna deployment and a robust uh, system bus and also the five volt uh, ground uh, planes and so on disconnections and then what you mentioned leonard is to uh, yeah other optional buses or systems that um that not every uh, other system might support, but that at least we know that are located at those pins. I mean, in the end, we have a 104 pins to allocate, um, and we should sh make sure that that we know where to put this. And I think this is the whole of the the challenge of of this discussion here: is where can we centralize our efforts, and then later on make sure that everyone is yeah adhering to the same. Standard. I, I put this with LibreCube. I've put uh, this wiki page up, uh, but I I see that there's no way uh, for others to edit it there. So it would be maybe nicer to have an online spreadsheet or something. Um, or, or probably a repository that people can admire or something. Or repository, yeah. And yeah, and probably but, also have like this discussion more more frequently. Something like a standardization body that we meet and discuss. Because frankly, like that's the, the you know speediest way to actually get in up to speed on what what's what's happening and who's doing what, right? And uh, like right here among us, we have I don't know like five or six different developers and implementers, probably more, or prospective developers, definitely more. So maybe we need more of this. Yeah, yeah. And the only reason why I, I was asking about that is because. I kind of envision like one board, it'll be your front end, you know, it has your LNAs and power amps, and then maybe your digitizers. And then you take that into, a, let's say, an IF stream or a digital stream. So you have raw samples going into a different board. That would be like, a let's say, an FPGA board. And then you do, you you, you can have the FPGA board for different uh, modulation schemes. You have you're basically taking your robots, making you know your constellation out of that, then decoding that, then sending that out on, let's say, like, like a can or uh, or ice cream bus. So, see what I'm saying? I mean that that was kind of my thinking behind the high speed bus. It would essentially be your high your F or of the um, front antenna. Can I speak on the high-speed bus? Uh, because of the, the definition of um, what is a high-speed bus depends on your application, right? Like, you know, if you're going to go all the way to LVDS type of high-speed bus or, you know, lower type of things. Um, and, and the question that um, I would like to ask back to you on that is, or for us, to, for all to, for all of us to, to discuss, is that most of the times those kind of things are uh, are dealt with on on within spacecraft are dealt with point to point connections, right? Like between two specific systems that require such uh, such a um, a direct connection. And generally speaking, the 104 has this bus aspect to it, which is that you don't really care to have like point to point type of things, right? And when you do, it's kind of like secondary usage of the of the bus. 
Now, if we're going to be going down the road of assigning also possible point-to-point -point high speed connections um, for the usages that you just said, which are totally valid, by the way, um, like IQ setting or high speed payload data setting between the storage and the, or the processor or whatever else it is, right? We need to be careful on the limitations of the connector itself. For example, LVDS, I'm pretty sure it's going to be almost too hard to to go through such such a connector, right? And and it will depend on, on various factors, but it will be probably a mess. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Uh, okay, so after our discussion, I think it's up to us side what we consider high speed, you know, and then it's re really going to be um, relative to the sample. You know, bit rate. So you say if you're digitizing a, you know, um, let's say constant, it's you're you're digitizing a certain bandwidth. That's limited in our applications, anyways, because this is um, mainly digitizing bits of bandwidth. You're digitizing a lot less. And then in the in the connector that we have, there's a way to get around tire bus structure where you like serpenting you know, from here to here to here, so you have this board to board connection, and then like a top board is connected to the next board over, let's say, two connections, two pins, and then that board is connected to the next board over two pins. So then there's a way to only have a certain one to one connection. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, it's just an idea, you know. Um, let me also um, bring in another point, which is the, um, um, don't know if you're familiar or if you heard about this lean set activity. It's um, driven by a um, Japanese uh, professor, um, and they're actually focusing on generating ISO standards. Um, they have done so. Um, in the past and they have currently on their agenda to actually standardize this CubeSat connector. Um, let me just show you. Um, I cannot share with you the document at this stage because I think it's not public. Um, you can see here this is the organization and here you can find some public downloads. Well actually there's only one public download, the other one is all password protected. Um, but you see the, um, um, yeah, their goal is to make an ISO standard out of this. So I think uh, it would make very much sense to get involved with them um, and see um, their, if they have ideas. I mean, the Do you best think that be, yeah. they could work in an open environment? Because by the website, it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> Well, the thing is, um, this standard in the end, uh, okay, will not be, it's an open standard, but it's not free of cost, as far as I understand these ISO standards. Um, but um, they share their presentation. So eventually, if they standardize it, if it goes through, they will present this because they're also university, this UNISEC activity um, organization is involved a lot in this. Um, University of Würzburg and so on. So they will promote this. So if we could find a way to kind of get our voice in and I mean in the end it's just about to uh, allocate the pins here on this headers uh, and, and if, if we can if we see that this is a good allocation and it's even my ISO standard the better, right? And so far it looks quite, I think they're quite correct. <laughs> um, Is it something you're interested what? in to follow up? I, I think now we are at a point where there are so many people starting to develop open source hardware that if we decide on something to use 
maybe others will also use it, maybe also companies, because, um, yeah, like someone mentioned here in the chat, like ISIS, Gomspace, Clydespace, they all have their own thing, but it's not compatible with each other. So if we decide something that is compatible across our projects, maybe at some point they will adapt it. Yeah. That's that's my point because they will not create something like Gomspace will not create something that is compatible with ISIS boards. They will never do this because yeah. you should buy all their stuff. So on on on, on the other hand, uh, we we might consider that um, you know you see now. Let's take let's take ASAP as an example. Um, they're using using. Uh, Part for liberal space, um, which probably will will be let's call it our standard, um, but they're also um, also buying commercial components, um, and and other teams will do the same. So I think we should aim a little bit into the direction that that we find the best compatibility with uh, also with commercial uh, boards that are already available. Uh, it, it, Probably is not completely possible, uh, as as Dave has suggested. Uh, but I think we should keep that a uh, view on that. Proprietary also boards, you mean, not commercial, right? So we say again. What's that? No, you, you said uh, completely agree with you. Uh, apart from the point about the other boards being commercial, they're proprietary boards. Our boards can be commercial too. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm. Well, I was referring to commercial off the shelf. What, what, you know, you buy from uh, these suppliers as ISIS or Comspace. Um, and I think this was one of the original ideas where we started from is to look, you know, what is the the um, the compatibility that we can when we compare all of their layouts. Uh, what is the best compatibility that we can reach? I had a reply if you can answer that. Uh, we have that showing up right now. We got five volts input and then also three, three volts. Um, this is 28 volts. Where is this five volts coming from? Is that um, from solar cells or is it? I'm, um, you know, solar pencil or and then which down, or is it coming from 28 volt? Now, okay, maybe to shed some light on this, um, on this assignment, uh, uh, overall, that just means that you can expect either that your system puts um, those signals there or it gets it from there. So if you're a power system, your job is then to put the 5 volt output on those pins, uh, your 3.3 volt output on those pins if you support it, and uh, ground on this. So you can imagine you have a ground, uh, sorry, a uh, power system developed, and it just like the one that I presented before, we support 5 volts, so that will be then there. Uh, if you also supply 3.3 volt, you find them there. And if you develop an onboard computer, uh, you would know where to grab your 3.3 supply power from, uh, from those pins. Of course, only once after you attach the, the power system. Um, and, but that, that's the, the whole purpose of this assignment, that you as a um, subsystem developer, you know uh, where you find your stuff, your pins, uh, your communication uh, lines, and, or the other way around, where you have to put them. Plus, um, and that's also um, part of this allocation is to to have some user-defined pins. So to have some areas where um, this is mission-specific. Then, so you would have, um, let's say, systems off the shelf, and I use the same name off the shelf, and um, it doesn't mean that. It, so, open source system can also be off the shelf. I think that's what we're working on. Um, but the, the thing is to have then a common agreement that when you put this power system that this university has developed 
uh, together with this attitude control system that this other open source company has developed and you match this together that this thing does not explode and this is actually working and that data can be exchanged and controlled um, and uh, and also um, the intention is not to think about uh, different types of connectors because when also we talk about high speed the next suggestion usually is that people say then let's skip this connector altogether but the connector is there it's there since well almost 20 years at for the cubesat world it's staying longer for the pc 104 world um, so let's um, standardize this one um, and agree on on this pins on these lines uh, and and continue from there um, and yeah my I agree with Malenko that we should um, find a way, a repository or something um, that that we know that this is the up-to-date and this is the reference. Um, and maybe we can then, if we don't agree with something, maybe we can then also or regularly have some work groups and iterate on this. But we have one central point uh, where we can find this information. And if we manage to get others on board, like people who like to write ISO standards or people who, um, yeah, just uh, want to make use of these boards then and, and have some ideas uh, what else to put in, then the better. I think we, we, we have a starting point here. And uh, Milenko, thanks for uh, putting together the, the live spreadsheet here. So. So we can see the uh, direct comparison of the three things that we have right now published, right? Like the VST-104, the Saturn XCOMs, and the, the LibreCube original definitions. And I think that we, we should do two things. One would be to come in here and do the um, you know work of reassignment, basically. Like who, who, what needs to move around in order to, to, to have a common uh, unblocking uh, situation among us three. So that's especially between uh, Saturn Scoms and VST-104 in, in a sense of actual existing boards. The LibreCube standard can uh, can be more abstract, I guess, around it. And then th that's the one work that needs to be done. And then the second work would be to go out and see what's the current compatibility with existing uh, proprietary boards that are out there, right? Um, and if there are like huge blockers, because of course there's going to be blockers, right? And there's going to be like um, uh, things that are not compatible, uh, catastrophically or not, <laughs> critically or not, right? Um, and uh, we just need to identify them and, and see if it makes sense for us to, to have any compatibility with any of them. Um, but I suppose that the first thing that we need to do is internally among the open source projects that are working right, right here, uh, just figure out that we have the correct uh, assignments among among each other. Good, I think that's yeah. a really good wrap up. And Konstantinos is going to add some more. Yeah, yeah. I'd just like to say that uh, uh, it's going to be possibly a hard task to get also uh, uh, commercial, not commercial, proprietary manufacturers on board as well. So, uh, yeah, for example, the, there are companies without interface documents or uh, data sheets online, even so. Uh, yeah, we'll need we'll need some some attempts to get data from there. Uh, however, there is I think there is a, indeed a good starting point, and uh, many architects would like, for example, the, the last pins to be uh, to contain the switched power lines. So uh, maybe this can be also a good starting point. Uh, and uh, we can start from the from the open source architectures and move to the to the public proprietary ones, uh, and then try to expand further. Uh, good point. Uh, we have to acknowledge, though, um, or remind, though, that uh, for the closed source uh, commercial, they actually make, I think, a bit of a living of adjusting and fixing those boards together uh, because they're not compatible. So the incentive to be compatible, um, you can, I mean, look at the web browsers, then, then you see the whole situation. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's keep going in this direction. I think that's a very fruitful comments we had here. Um, and let's all go to the room one for the conclusion. And then we have some uh, just a, PRs, yeah. 
Timely, so that we don't leave this hanging, uh, I suppose that we should get it back with our teams, complete this spreadsheet that uh, Milenko really rightfully put together, and then we can probably uh, arrange for, for a call or something to, you know, in, in two weeks from now or something, um, over the holidays, <laughs> to, to, to figure out, uh, um, you know, next steps on, on this, at least for Among Us trip, right, so that we have those projects together. And, and the users of it. So, Costadinos, of course, you know, uh, oh, because you're also developing your own board, right? So, you should you should put your own columns here for, for your own board there. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, we don't have anything uh, uh, huge, but yeah. Still, <laughs> cool. Okay, okay. nice. Then, um, let's go to room one. And then later have a drink. <laughs> mm -hmm.